Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here with another video on building games with Make Code Arcade. We are currently working our way through the extensions. I'm teaching you all about how to use the extensions that are on the recommended list. And eventually when we finish that, I'll go into other extensions that are not on that list that I enjoy using. So today we're going to be looking at the settings blocks extension, which if you go into extensions, you will find it right here, settings blocks. So we're going to be doing that one today. Um, this one is one that I myself have not used very often. I learned about it through a student, so I never really played around with it. And then I saw a student who figured out how to make it so that they could use the setting blocks to create auto saves, essentially saving your progress in a game. He ended up building a really cool game with this feature, and I'll share a link to his game in the description so you can check it out. So I owe Jackson uh, for teaching me how to use this block. Now, there may be more than you can do than just this aspect of it, because it is a little bit of an advanced extension. But you'll see it when you add it, it adds the toolbox here. And these are the blocks that it uses. And we will dig into those in just a moment. Um, the program I am working on right now, this is my multi-level game that I built a while back when we were learning how to create functions to build a multi-level game. So this game has three levels. And here's my code for it, where I used a variable called level to keep track of my levels. And then at the end of each level, it moved me to a new level and I was able to go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this game so that if I die, rather than the whole game restarting, it will actually restart at the level. Now, right now with this game, I never actually built any hazards. I never built any dangers. So real quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and make some edits to my game here where I'm going to add some lava. There's no monsters in my game. I never got to that point when I was doing the video with you guys. But I'm just going to add some lava to the floor, and I'm going to erase the walls. That way I don't walk over them. I can actually walk into them. And I'm going to do that for all three levels for the sake of this video. And I'll knock this out real, real quick. Um, once again, if you, you know, are new to this channel, if you've never watched me before, the, everything that you're seeing as far as this program is concerned, I made videos showing how to build tile maps. I made videos showing how to build multi-level games. And you might want to check those out if you have not already done so. This is the program that I used, or that I created in those videos. All right, I'm almost done making my lava on all three levels, just as a hazard. And I'm remembering to erase the wall feature on them so that I can walk into them. All right, now that I've made my lava, I just need to real quickly create the hazard that ends the game. So when player overlaps with the lava, we're just going to throw a quick game over lose tab there. Okay, so let's see what the game looks like right now, just to make sure it works. If I walk into the lot, game ends. I'm going to mute my game just so we don't have to hear the sound effect every time there. All right, and now if I keep going, that was level one. If I go ahead and get to level two or three, the way the game currently is, oh, I almost ran into that lava. That was close. All right, I'm in level two now. If I hit the lava, it should take me back to the beginning of the game. And there we go. And it's back at level one. So it's working the way it's designed. But let's say I'm building a much larger game. This game only has three levels, but maybe I'm building a much, much larger game. And I don't want the players to have to restart the entire game when they die. Maybe I just want them to restart at that level. So using the setting blocks allows us to do that in a pretty interesting way. So in the settings section, you have some different blocks here. Can I make that larger so you guys can see it better? There we go. All right. So we have set setting to a number, set setting to string. There's also some stuff here with arrays. And then down here at the bottom, we can remove a setting that we create. We can check using logic to see if a certain setting exists. We can also clear all settings. So we're going to be using several of these. I'm not going to be using all of these. And I'm going to be using them to create an autosave feature. There may be other stuff you can do with this. I'm sure there is other stuff you can do with this. But this is the only thing I've ever done with this extension. Okay. So here's how this is going to work. When my game runs and it goes to each level, there's three levels in my game right now. I need it to remember when it gets to a level two or level three. I don't really need it to keep track of level one because level one's the first level, but I do need it to remember levels two and level three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the settings section and I'm going to create set setting to number. So in when level two gets created right here, so when the player first gets to level two, and I'm going to set the setting, and I'm going to call it current level, but I'm going to abbreviate it to curd lev. 
Uh, okay, so current level or current level, I'm going to set it to two, just as a reminder that we are on level two. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for level three. Like I said, I'm not worried about level one because level one is the first level anyways. So basically, I'm setting this up very similar to how I would create a variable. Very, very similar to the set variable twos. The difference is that this setting block does not reset when the game resets. So that's the big difference between using the setting blocks and using a regular variable. With a regular variable, when your game ends and you go back to the on start, all of your, all your variables reset. Everything resets back to the way it was at the beginning of the game. The setting blocks do not reset unless you tell them to, okay? So that means that as I'm playing, it will remember what my current level is regardless of whether or not the current, the whole game ends, right? And the whole game resets, it will still remember this setting because this is not being reset when the game resets. That's the big advantage of the setting blocks. This allows you to save data that is not getting reset when the game restarts. Okay, so if I get to level two, I want it to set current level to two. If I get to level three, I want it to set current level to three. So then what I need to do is have, now put something in my game in the on start that checks to see if the current level has been created and if it is to send me to that level. So what I'm gonna do is right now in my on start, it creates the characters, it creates all that stuff, has animations. There's a lot of stuff here from previous videos. Um, then down here, call run level. So this is what's actually creating the level and it's running it as level one because that is the expectation, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to change that. So I'm going to add a logic block in here. I'm gonna put it before the function. So before it runs the level, level one. Initially, level is equal to one, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this so that if a setting with the name, and I gotta make sure I type the name exactly the same way I did on the other ones. If there's any spelling difference, this isn't gonna work. So current level, right, which I abbreviate as curlev, and I capitalize the L. Okay, so if a setting with that name exists, the only way a setting with that name exists is if they have reached level two or level three, right? So if a setting with that name exists, what I want it to do is I want it to change to reset the level variable. So instead of being the level E being equal to one, which it was up there, we're gonna set level to be equal to, and I'm gonna go back to settings, and I'm gonna grab this one, this bubble here. And once again, I gotta type in curlev and be very careful with my spelling. So if curlev exists, set level to the setting curlev as a number. So if curlev equals two, level will now be equal to two. If curlev equals three, level will now be equal to three. You guys see how I'm doing this? All right, so let's test it out. So I'm playing my game. If I die on level one, I restart at level one, that's fine. Let's go ahead and die at level two now and see if it resets at level two. All right, so I'm now on level two. Curlev should now also be equal to two. I'm gonna go ahead and die. And when it restarts me, Okay, I am on level two, but the, I'm missing the background. We're gonna have to check the code on that and see what I'm missing there. Let's go ahead and get to level three now. All right, so this is level three. I'm gonna go ahead and die, and it should restart me at level three. Game over. Yeah, this is level three still. Cool, so it worked. It works very well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at why level two and reset did not have a background. Oh. It didn't have background because I created background in level one and I didn't change it for level two. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna duplicate that and put that in level two. That way when it restarts, it does have the correct background. That'll fix that problem. Okay, so it works. We have an auto save feature where it is auto saving each level. Now here's one problem you were going to run into as a programmer if you set this up. If you go to test your game and I go ahead and hit this refresh button right here, it still has me on level three. It's not giving me a way to restart the entire game back to the beginning, back to level one, right? So here's what I would recommend you do as a programmer. If you're building a game with an auto save feature and you're using these setting blocks, here's what I would do. I would grab a new on a button press and I would change it to something else, probably the menu button, because I'm assuming your game isn't gonna use the menu button. 
So this is what I would use. If you're, if you're doing something with button combos, you could also use button combos and create a unique button. But the idea here is that I'm creating a button press that will actually reset everything. So what I'm going to do is inside the on menu button press, I'm going to go down here to clear all settings. And then I'm also going to go to game and do reset game. So now as the programmer, as I'm testing my game, if I want to go back to the beginning, I just need to click the menu button, which is this one right here. Boom. Now I'm back at level one um, and the settings have been reset so that they're no longer existing. Let's test to make sure I fixed that level two problem. I'm pretty sure I did. Let's just go ahead and check it out. So I'm at level two now and oh, I didn't mean to hit that, but OK, we're going to reset at level two. And there I am. Ha ha. It worked. We're still on level two. Everything's working correctly. And then if I want to reset everything, I have to hit that menu button because that's how I set it up. Now, if you do something like this that erases all the settings, this is really just for you as the programmer. So to build this in while you're working on the game is a good idea. But before you release the game to other people, before you hit that share button and copy the link, I would just delete this, right? That way it's no longer in the game when other people are playing it. You really only need that for you as the tester. All right. So I think that's all I wanted to say about that. It looks like a complicated um, code, but it really isn't that hard. You're creating something similar to a variable. The difference being it doesn't reset when the game resets. I do want to notice that down here you have one where it has setting as a string. You could potentially create a password type thing if you wanted to. It's a little bit more advanced, but a string is meant to represent a series of text, right? Um, some of the old video games back before video games had memory that could save some of the old video games like the nintendo games used to give you a passcode that you could use to enter and restart the game where you left off that's kind of the idea here so you could in theory create something like a passcodes um, using the string setting it would be a little bit advanced but you could totally do it if you really put your mind into it okay so i'm gonna go ahead and stop this video now i hope you learned something new today if you did please click that like button if you build something with autosave i would love to play it so hit that share button copy the link, put it in the comments. And as I mentioned, if you want to play the game that my student made that, that introduced me to this for the first time, I will also put a link in the description. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to come and check out this page so that they can also build fun games. All right, I will see you guys next time.